Hey guys, welcome to this AWS online workshop and this is about modern application development. So in this episode, you will learn how to host a web application on S3 bucket and serve it through CloudFront distribution and also how to allow users to access the website only via CloudFront distribution using origin access identities. So let's get started. So this is the entire architecture that we are going to develop in this workshop and today we are focusing this bit. So I will zoom into this part. So it's about static web hosting. So there's a user browser who will be requesting for the web application and the request will go through a CloudFront distribution and the CloudFront will reach out to a tree bucket, get the website content, cache it and then serve it to the user. So in order to implement this, we are going to use AWS console, the graphical user interface, because I think it will be useful for the beginners who are just getting into AWS and start using these services. But in the next video, I'll show you how to implement the same setup using AWS CLI and CloudFormation. So feel free to skip this video if you want to see how to do it using AWS CLI and CloudFormation using infrastructure as code. All right, so let's get started. First, I want you to copy or clone this GitHub repository. So this is the GitHub URL and this is the GitHub repository. So either you can copy that URL or click here and copy the URL from here. So I just copied it. Go to the terminal and create a new directory. AWS workshop and CD into AWS workshop and I'm going to clone it using JIT clone, paste the URL, hit enter. And then type ls and cd into AWS modern workshop. And let's open the code in Visual Studio code in my case. So this is our clone repository. And now let's check out the branch Python. I will type JIT check out Python. This workshop is available in other languages as well like .NET, Java, etc. But I'm using Python in this case. All right. So go to module one and there you should see a web folder and click on index.html. Now this is our index.html. So this will be our main HTML page. We are going to host it in S3 bucket and serve it through a CloudFront distribution. Okay, now let's go to AWS console. So I'm in my AWS account. I will go to services and I will go to S3. You can click here if it is already available in your history or else under storage, you can select S3. First, we need to create a bucket to host our web application. So let's click create bucket and give it an unique name. I will call it Misfit Frontend and click Next. So we are not enabling versioning or anything. So click Next again and make sure to remove this block all public access check because we are not going to block the anonymous access to our web application. So anyone can view our web application and then click next and click create bucket. All right. So let's see if it is created. Here we go. Misfit front end. Go into your bucket and then let's upload that index.html. I will click upload and add file. So that is in module one and in the web index.html. Double click on that and click next click next and again click next and upload it. You should see the progress down here. Here we have it. So this is our index HTML. Now let's enable static web hosting on S3. So in order to do that, you have to select properties tab. So in properties tab, you should see static web hosting tile. Click on that and you should see the endpoint of the static website. If we enable static web hosting for this particular bucket, 
So select use this bucket to host a website option. And what is the index document? So it is index.html, the one we just uploaded. And error document will select the same index.html. And now click save. Okay, so bucket hosting is enabled. So let's try to view our web application by going into our web endpoint. I will paste it here in a new tab. Oh, we got an forbidden error because we haven't yet added the permission to view the content in that S3 bucket. So in order to do that, we have to add a bucket policy. So I'll go back to S3 management console. Now we need to configure permission. Click on permission tab and we have to select bucket policy. So we are applying a policy to our S3 bucket. So what policy are we going to add it? So the bucket policy is in the format of JSON. There's this documentation link. We can take an example, go to that link and there you should see another link to policy example. Click on that as well. And if you scroll down a little bit, you should see granting read only permission to anonymous user. So under this title, you should see the JSON policy down here. So copy this and get back to your S3 console bucket policy window and paste it in. All right. Now in this policy, it's about giving any principle. So the principal name is star, so that means anybody, any anonymous user, we are allowing S3 get object action. So what is S3 get objects? Basically, getting our index.html and send it to the browser so that it will render our index.html page. Now the resource, at the moment it's directed to example bucket but our bucket name is right up here. It is misfit dash front end or any bucket name that you have given. Paste it in here and click save. All right, you should see another warning. The bucket has public access. That's all right. So let's go to our endpoint and hit refresh. See if our browser can now view it very well. Now it is available for the all users. So even at this point, our website is ready to view using this endpoint for any users in the world. But as for the best practice, we are going to use CloudFront distribution to serve our website. We are not going to direct users request directly to the S3 bucket. Instead, we will always go through a CloudFront distribution just like in this diagram. One of the reasons why we do that is to use the caching or the caching static content at CloudFront level and serve it very quickly to the user without going all the way to the S3 bucket and fetch those data or in this case index HTML every time a user is requesting for the website. And we know the CloudFront is operating at edge locations. It's a global service, so it operates close to the user. So if the website is hosted in US East 1 or North Virginia, for a user in Australia, the request would have to travel a long way to get to the S3 bucket if you aren't using CloudFront in between. Because of this request round trip time is longer, it will take a little bit of time to load the web application. But instead, since we are using CloudFront and the CloudFront caches this S3 bucket content, it will be served to a closest location for the user who is in Australia. Okay, so let's do that. So I will go to services again and type CloudFront and I'll open it in a new tab. I will click create distribution and we are going to create a web distribution and we have to set up an origin for the CloudFront distribution. So our origin is S3 bucket. So go back to S3 console and in the properties tab, static web hosting, copy the endpoint URL without HTTP colon slash slash. Go to CloudFront and for the domain name, 
just paste it in. I will name the origin ID as frontend web and leave all other settings default such as minimum TTL. Now how much time it's going to cache the request. By default it's going to keep it this much of milliseconds. And after this time is expired, it will go fetch the latest data from this tree bucket and come back to CloudFront and cache it again. So leave these defaults and click create distribution. So it's going to take about 15 minutes to deploy this CloudFront distribution. You can see it's in progress at the moment. So I'm going to post the video and come back once it's done. All right, guys, so it is deployed. It took me about 10 minutes. If I go to last modify tab and click on the filter, I should see my distribution is now deployed. So I will click on to the CloudFront distribution ID. So that will take me into the CloudFront distribution. Just to verify that whether this is the right one. Yes, it is the right one. You can see my origin and click on the general tab. And now I can use CloudFront domain to access my web application. So I will copy the CloudFront domain right here. I will take a new tab, paste that in and hit enter. Here we go. So our website is now loading through CloudFront distribution. Perfect. So now we go back to our diagram. We have implemented this full setup, but this is small issue. Now guys, I show you we can access it through the CloudFront as well as S3 bucket URL. But now our intention is to serve our website solely or entirely from CloudFront distribution. But right now, a user who knows the URL of S3 bucket can skip CloudFront and directly access the website using that S3 endpoint. Let me show you that. Now, this is the S3 endpoint can see misfit-frontend.s3-website.us is one and if I hit enter the website loads and this is the CloudFront URL and it loads the application as well. Now let's restrict this behavior. We are going to block all the direct requests to our S3 endpoint but allowing only the users to access it through the CloudFront distribution. We do this using origin access identities or OAI for short. Now origin access identity or OAI is basically a CloudFront user. So our CloudFront, we are going to create a user and we will allow only that user to access our S3 website. So any anonymous request directly coming to the S3 will be dropped, but only it will allow requests coming from the CloudFront because CloudFront, we set up a user. So in order to do that, so I'm inside my CloudFront distribution, I can see under security, there is origin access identity. Click on that. Right now I have a couple of identities. You might not have this. Either case, click create origin access identity and give it a comment. I will type CloudFront user. Click create. And this is the created identity can see it involves with an ID as well as an Amazon S3 canonical use ID. So now we have to edit our S3 bucket permission to only allow this CloudFront user or OAI to access that bucket. So if you can remember right now, if I go to permissions and to the bucket policy, it's allowing all the principles or all anonymous accesses as well. So in order to update this, we can do it very easily through CloudFront itself. So I will go to CloudFront and I will go to the distributions and select my distribution. And I will go to origins and origin groups, select my S3 origin and click edit. And right now it does not show me a place to enter that origin access identity. It's because we are using the website endpoint of S3 bucket. So in this case, we have to use our S3 endpoint general URL. It's not the S3 website URL. So how to find that? Just copy the first part of this URL and remove the rest and paste that in 
again so misfit in my case dash front end and now it shows me the s3 bucket endpoint misfit front end dot s3 dot amazon dot com earlier it was dot s3 dash website right so select this one now it's going to ask me another question restrict bucket access yes and now it asks what is the origin access identity i'm going to say okay i will use an existing identity and then I can select the identity, which is the CloudFront user. And this is the shortcut. It allows me to grant read permission on the bucket. So if I click yes, update bucket policy, it's going to update the bucket policy as well. So let's do that and select yes, update bucket policy and click yes, edit. All right. So let's see if it has already updated my bucket policy. So I'm going to refresh this page. So right now, principal is star. So let's see what will happen once it is refreshed. I will go back to bucket policies. Now look, it has added another statement to our bucket policy. If you look at the principal here, the principal is AWS, the key name, and the value is CloudFront user. And this is our origin access identity name, CloudFront. And this is our origin access identities ID which is this ID, okay? So we can remove our previous statement because we no longer need that and keep only this one, save it. All right, so let's try to access our S3 endpoint directly. So I will come here and hit enter. Now it's forbidden, but if I go to CloudFront and hit refresh, it should view my website. Beautiful. So this is what I want to show you in this episode, guys. And in the next video, we will do the same setup using AWS CLI and CloudFormation. I'll see you then, and thanks for watching.